My dear friends, my name is Jacob Fiveash, and welcome to Uncaged Zoo Tours. If you are new to the channel and love animals, I recommend and appreciate hitting the like and subscribe buttons and the bell icon to join me on my tours. Is everyone here? Good. Today, we're going back to Tennessee's Zoo Knoxville. So far, we went to their children's zoo, Kids Cove, and now we'll be seeing not one, but two exhibits. Black Bear Ridge, which opened in 2000, and the neighboring Asian Trek, which opened between 2017 and 2018 in two phases. On top of that, we'll learn about the zoo's red panda breeding program, and one of the zoo's newest areas, Clayton Otter Creek. Let's begin. Starting with Black Bear Falls, it's one of the very first or last exhibits you might see on an actual visit. Oh, and I also got to see some of their dinosaur animatronics when I went. Anyways, this exhibit talks about the Appalachian Bear Center, which is located in Townshed, Tennessee. They care for newborn cubs, orphan cubs, and sick or injured adult bears. For example, a bear named Bert was doing well, but his sister Lamb was very sick. She was watched for the next 36 hours, and eventually, the University of Tennessee Veterinary Teaching Hospital was bought in to help her. Doctors found that Lamb was bitten on her nose, which caused most of her front teeth to fall out. Thankfully, most of the missing teeth were baby teeth, but she still needed antibiotics. Within a week, Lamb was gaining her strength back and five months later, she was released back into the wild. The Appalachian Bear Center also helps educate people about black bears and the threats they face in the wild. Another bear that came to the center was a cub named Houdini, who was found with a broken leg. After Houdini had surgery at the University of Tennessee Veterinary Teaching Hospital, he was brought to the bear center to rehabilitate for the next five months. But an hour after he arrived, Houdini decided to escape, and eight weeks later was recaptured. By the time he was recaptured, Houdini's leg was almost healed up, but he still needed to wait for four more months. The bear was tranquilized before being released in a ground den in Great Smoky Mountains National Park. After everyone was gone, Houdini woke up and was never seen or heard from again. Now, let's shift our focus from North America to Asia, the world's largest continent. The first animal in the Asian trek lives with some white-faced whistling ducks. Say hello to the white-naped crane. They have a very widespread range in northeastern Mongolia and southeast Russia, but they can also migrate as far as south as China. These birds usually build nests on elevated grounds in wetlands using reeds and grass. Each year, white-naped cranes spend part of their time up north, where they build nests and care for the hatchlings in the spring. In the colder months, the cranes migrate south. Their wetland homes are threatened by habitat loss, which means there's less space for the cranes to eat and raise a family. However, some people in Japan use artificial feeding stations to help the crane survive. Now it's time to meet one of my favorite animals, tigers. I've talked about Sumatran, Bengal, and Amor tigers, but not the Malayan tigers. These cats are only found on the Malay Peninsula and southern Thailand, and scientists estimate that there are less than 350 of these cats left in the world. But on a lighter note, Zoo Knoxville is part of the Species Survival Plan, which helps preserve the future of these cats. At 4 inches, a tiger has the longest canine teeth of any cat. They can eat up to 88 pounds of food in a single sitting. Although the Malayan and Sumatran tigers are the smallest of the six tiger species, they are still some of the world's largest cats. They can see just as well as we can during the day, but they can see six times better at night, allowing them to hunt a taper. This button demonstrates a tiger's retractable claws, and the next four showcase some of their vocalizations. 
similar to the raccoon and owl buttons in the kid's coat, including growling, Hub sounds <laughs> chuffing. and hissing. The next two exhibits are part of the second phase of the Asian trek. Welcome to Langer Landing, home of the Silver Leaf Langers, also known as Silverly Langers. Their teeth have adapted to break down the leaves that are part of their diet. A few years ago, a baby Langer was born to parents Lucy and Walter, and in 2022, another baby langer was born. Baby langers are bright orange, like traffic cones, which is great camouflage as some predators, like leopards, see orange as green. Their color fades away after a few months, leaving the babies with the same gray fur as their parents. With the two babies, there are now eight playful langers at Zoo Knoxville. They rarely come to the ground, and often live in the canopy with other primates. Now, the Langers are cute and all, but the real stars of the trek live high up in the treehouse. And now, for the first time since my primate South America at the Birmingham Zoo tour, say hello to the white-handed or Lar Gibbon. I guess they're just as excited to see me, but I think they're hooting to keep predators away. But I'm not a predator or a rival, Gibbon. I'm a nice guy. Anyways, the star of the show is Georgie, a male Gibbon. He loves to be the center of attention, even when it's raining. His older roommate is Malay, who is a little more cautious than Georgie. There's also an elderly female Gibbon named Nipper who lives on the other side of the zoo in the Gorilla Valley and Chimpanzee Ridge, who is over 55 years old, making her one of the oldest white-handed gibbons in the United States. The average lifespan for a white-handed gibbon is around 30 years in the wild and 50 years in captivity. White-handed gibbons communicate through term songs, which don't require writing music and are performed by bonded pairs like Georgie and Malay. The duets happen in the middle of the morning and can last for over 11 minutes. They also have flexible shoulders, long arms, and strong legs to navigate through the rainforest. They can also swing at 35 miles per hour, making them the fastest arboreal mammal that can't fly. Our next stop is the Red Panda Village, which has blue-crowned laughing thrushes and Edwards pheasants. That's a mouthful. Anyways, the village is also home to the zoo's famous red pandas. According to Zoo Knoxville, over 110 red pandas have been born at this zoo, making it the red panda capital of the world. I guess being the only member of the family Alluridae does have its advantages. Red pandas live in high altitude temperate forests from Myanmar to southeastern China but can also be found in the Himalayas, the highest mountain range in the world. But why are red pandas red? They would easily be seen if they don't blend in with their bamboo. To answer your question, a red panda's fur is the same color as the red moss and white lichen in their habitat. One of the ways people have helped save red pandas from extinction is by planting trees. In Nepal, 
Red pandas are threatened by deforestation, but a group of scientists from the Red Panda Network have worked with people who live in Nepal by planting native tree saplings so they can build the world's first protected red panda habitat. Our last stop takes us back to North America. The Clayton Otter Creek, which is one of the zoo's newest additions, opened in 2022 and is home to three North American river otters. Say hello to Clayton, Pascal, and Reed. These otters are championing Zoo Knoxville's conservation efforts for clean water, which is where their wild cousins live. The zoo encourages guests to bring reusable water bottles or buy water in aluminum cans because microplastics can cause serious damage to an otter's health. By doing simple actions like recycling, we can prevent microplastics from polluting local waterways like rivers and streams. Speaking of water, North American river otters love both salt and fresh water. Even though they are more active in the warmer months, the otters don't mind the cold and can spend the entire winter moving around. Besides, that warm toasty fur also helps the otters stay warm in the winter time. And we're finally finished with another tour of Zoo Knoxville. I would highly recommend checking out all of these exhibits because playful otters, singing gibbons, and learning about how people care for animals can make your visit more enjoyable. When we return to Zoo Knoxville, we'll head right next door to the otters to visit the ARC or Amphibian and Reptile Conservation Campus. It's one of the best reptile houses around because it's very interactive. We'll also meet several species of endangered snakes, chameleons, crocodiles, lizards, and frogs. It will also be a lot of fun. Besides, I need to talk about more reptile houses. Today's question is, have you ever heard or seen an animal communicate? Thank you for watching my videos, and I'll see you next time. You're smart, creative, and kind. Woo!